What's up, you guys? I'm Mike Gallagher. We are drafting an underdog best ball team where first place gets 50K, and we got some bad luck. We are picking six with Dinkmeyer and Claff. Dink, are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm good. Six is six is kind of a nut low spot, so it takes a little mm-hmm. shimmer off the shine, but but ready to go. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm in yeah. good spirits. Despite some upload errors on my preseason stuff, I'm I'm hanging in there. Good spirits. Yeah. Claff, how's it going? All right, we're gonna show the people how you're going to play your way out of like the nut low draw. I'm ready, we got man. the number how... six, man. Yeah. We run good. I mean, we, we got two Giannis's. We got two double Greek. Double Greek. We got double Euro meat. And now we're like... <laughs> well, hopefully we're someone doesn't... Well, the good news is I don't recognize a lot of these names. Uh, so maybe we catch a break here and we get one of the big five. Uh, should note after this draft, we're doing the the my guy draft. We talked about it a little bit in some of the content, but uh, I am going to get roasted. I'm drinking on the stream um, some high noons. I'm not drinking beer anymore because I know fans going to lay into me. Um, so got, I got to take it to have a couple of drinks, to take the edge off. But um, so, yeah, we'll be talking more about that. So yeah, we're just praying for uh, praying for somebody to, to to reach up and take somebody here. So Mike, I uh, I opened uh, a stone hazy double IPA, FML. In your honor, the beer is called. Oh, we got we out. got lucky, guys. We got lucky. Cat cat gone. What the hell is this? What what is this draft? So we love it. We love to see it. We're gonna get uh, uh, Luca or Tatum. Let's see if we get wow. the double get the double gift. No double no. gift. Obviously yeah. Tatum. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it, <laughs> it's. It's the right pick. He's the best player by a mile, but he also has a terrible playoff schedule. So it's yeah, also it's bittersweet. Yeah, uh, I'm winning. Yeah, slamming Tatum at six. Yeah, got to do it. Like, I mean, it, there's such a big drop off in my mind from the top five to like six. It's like it in NFL after Eckler. You know, after mm-hmm. to get to, you know three wide well, receivers. Well, Jamar Chase sucks now, um, but yeah, he... <laughs> God, I can't even think about T. Higgins. What if if T. Higgins doesn't play again? At least, oh, at God. least, at least, let us know up front. That's all I. Yeah, that's right. all I, have. I had a Waller I, on the PC. Yeah. Yeah, we were down by one point going into the fourth quarter with zero from Waller, and we had Devontae going too, and he got the second TD. That was pretty must, sweet. Must be nice. I was down two point seven points with Higgins in main event. Thought thought it was good. Thought oh, it was like oh, two point yeah. seven. Yeah, Higgins has got that easy. That's a first quarter, first drive. And then no, he's yeah. gone. I I needed in my main league. I needed six point eight out of T and Juju. Nope. Jeez, so, dude. All all of us got it bad. Tough times. Dude. All right. Well, uh, my guys pulled it out of there. That's awesome. At least we got that. Where, how's this board looking? We got uh, LeBron goes 11. Uh, Steph Curry goes 10. Steph is a guy that um, I wrote about him last year when I did a piece. We were hoping to do a piece this year, like a roster construction piece, but we just never got the data released from Underdog um, in time. And mm-hmm. you know, obviously, we can't analyze the data without the data. But we got the data the year before, and you know that year Steph was one of the highest scorers using FanDuel scoring, and he had like below average advance rates. And we were like, uh, I was like, okay, well, like let me look into this, and like basically like the distribution. You ever heard like veteran best ball? You ever heard mm-hmm. that? So like Steph Curry, not veteran best ball. <laughs> <laughs> Steph Curry, better in like you know you need this guy. He's going to be giving you 45 points every night. And like, basically this year we have that same profile that is coming off of a championship run. So, uh, and we, we have lower games played expectations. So not really a guy I I did take him uh, last, like maybe four days ago for the very first time. Uh, So I have like one share out of like, you know, 300 drafts or whatever that is. Um, at, I don't know, picks 16, 17, he, he's a, he's a situation like David Montgomery in NFL. You're only drafting this guy. If he falls past ADP, whenever he's on your team, even though you're underweight him, 
you're always uh, after ADP with those guys that you're underweight. All right, we're on deck. We got a wing. AD, we're, on, we're up right now. So we looking at okay. Dante Siakam. Do you want to go double wing boner? I would go. I would go Siakam or Sabonis here, personally. I like. All right, I let's like go. Let's go Siakam, guys. Right, I was so gonna I'm good with that. Yeah, there there are gonna be. And is that Dink? Is that because there's gonna be some guards next round available for us? There's, there's always guards. Mm. Always there's guards. Always guards. Yeah. Always guards. Yeah. 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 So I like maybe a Dejunte, but I I agree that Siakam is is probably the pick there. Um, like we will have. Um, so Bonus probably not going to make it back to us, but one of these Cade, Beal, Donnie's will be there. Mm-hmm. Or maybe we can consider Bam as well. If, would, would you want to do that and go no guard or no? I just wouldn't reach on Bam with the playoff schedule that they have. Oh, like, true, true. Yeah, Bam exactly. Have, okay. Yeah. Bam, Bam, I pretty much only take after ADP. Mm-hmm. Me as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot of them. Yeah, I should add if you're listening to this, check out this article. Um, get all the playoff schedules. Shout out Claf. Um, I, I have oh, it man. up every time. Do- every time I'm drafting, I have it up just to like make sure I'm not screwing it up. Yeah, man. And like also, like what you can do is you can download our rankings and then upload them into Underdog and then tweak your rankings to consider the schedule and save your rankings. So then when you enter the draft, you you know that your rankings have already considered the playoff schedule. So that, that's what I do. It, it, I find that with that preparation before the draft, then it makes it easier for you to make decisions while the draft is happening. Hmm. Claff, let me throw something at you that I've been kind of spitballing as I've been doing more drafts. So yeah. like, say for instance, you're, you, you take, so let me pull the screen up. Actually, let's make our pick first and I'll talk about it. Okay. All right. We've got um, three guards on the board and Paul George. Um, we're picking 30. So we're, okay. we're on deck. We got Kate or Kyrie coming to us. Basically. That's probably the move. Do you have a preference of those two? If we get the pick um, or do you want to take Fox better playoff schedule? Well, or do you, um, you want to go? You don't want to go three wings, right? That's that's off the table. No, no, no. You can't. You can't take yeah, Paul yeah, George yeah. here. So you, I agree. You, I think it's a guard, um, mm-hmm. and we have three guards to consider: Kyrie, I take, Cade. I take. I take Cade. I'll go with Cade. Um. All right, that that's fine. We can go Cade. I know he's got a subpar play schedule. I'm good with you. Want to? I'm good with yeah, let's you, just take Cade. Okay, fine. You sense really? my hesitation there. Yeah. yeah, the re- the reason yeah. I'll the reason I'll note like the subpar playoff schedule is obviously a concern for Cade, but when it's your first guard, you need sort of an anchor production that's going to get you to the playoffs, and then you can build up with a seven eight guard roster that has guys who can run into good situations on good playoff schedules and and go from there. And so that's kind of my thought process on it is like Kyrie's a little bit tough as an anchor number one guard because of the game's played history. Um, and then, so it's like, do you, are you, you know, are you reaching a decent bid on Fox, like four or five picks? And, you know, I think it's, it's reasonable, but if, if like, if you, if you go that route, you're just not taking Kate a lot in these drafts at all. And that's the route that I'm going. Um, and it could be the wrong route, but basically with Kate Cunningham's ADP where it at, where it's at, I think if everything goes right for him, you're not really gaining value. You're 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 breaking even, and like, at least if I take Fox there, I have the upside of the eight games in the play in the finals. You know, mm-hmm. so like I agree with the Kyrie. I, it was either Fox or Cade for me, um, but I'm okay not having a lot of Cade um, because like the playoff schedule number one and then playoff. And then the second consideration is like his, his efficiency and his rates, like his production got a lot better towards the second half. And I don't know how much to buy that, you know, and the market is certainly buying that. No, for sure. That's, that's a very legit question, uh, concern. And like, oftentimes when you see second half efficiencies, it's one of the things that I don't like leaning on as much. I know 
Um, I know a lot of other people do, but it's often against like really like tanking teams, bad te- like. It's just right, we're up. So I would take. Uh, I would probably take. I'd probably take Drew here, honestly, personally. But CP3 is fine. Van Vliet, uh, Toronto doesn't have a great playoff schedule either, if I remember. Yeah. I would take Drew as well. I'm going to go with that. So this actually is a good reason. That, I think I talked about before. So let me bring this up, uh, what I was mentioning. So like, say you took Chris Paul, right? So the Suns, I'm pretty sure this is the this under the great. Uh, oh, not drafting. That's drafting. Uh, okay, so sorry. It's okay, so different, different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to, so it doesn't apply here is what I was saying. But um, okay, so say it's below average. But Phoenix is yeah, so, so like just like the, so say like the Bulls, right? So say you somehow land, you know, Demar and I don't know Vooch, right? Like probably not something you want to do, but like you're really weak in the semis. So like I'm like trying to force my way like, a little bit of like trying to make sure that I'm playing guys who have like eight weeks like a little bit later in draft to like kind of mitigate that because my high end guys have such a shitty semifinal. Is that like am I overthinking it? Or is that something I don't, I don't, I've only done like a couple times, but what do you think about something like that? I think it's fine. I mean, I, it's mm-hmm. not something that I want to make a hard and fast rule that I'm doing every single time because a lot of things can happen that we can't predict. Yeah. And I want to respect that uncertainty. <clears throat> and, um, but I'm, but I, the, I liked Drew because I think that CP3 has more downside because of mm-hmm. his age and the, the, you know, like Derrick Henry, like at some point the guy gets hurt, you know, the guy, mm-hmm. Chris Paul has been shoving it down everybody's throats, all the haters mm-hmm. for like three years. But, and then we were also looking, I think at Ben Simmons there and Fred Van Vliet. And like, I like Drew over Van Vliet. He has like a little bit of a, lo- like a lower ADP. So th- that's why I, I prefer Drew Holiday there. It would have been nice to take, um, wait, is Brandon, is Brandon Ingram still available? He, he, uh, he's he still was, there, yeah. He was, okay, yeah. so there, it yeah. would have been nice to take him, but we could not because we have already taken two wings. So, I mean, that maybe. I think you, you still. Know, could. I think you still could if you wanted to. I just think I. I think it's better to take the guard there when they're projected somewhat similarly. Um, but I think you could if you like. If Ingram comes back to us, we absolutely could take Ingram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially the because guy, the, guy, the guy in front of us has no wings. He almost has to take him in front of us, but we'll see. Yeah, um, especially because we've already wrapped up the second guard. Like, so I think that taking the third wing becomes more viable in round five than in round four. Sure, but my but the you're just flipping it. Like, Rogier probably would have been here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. like, so you're just it's just it's just flipping it. I think it would have been fine either way. It's just yeah. oh, he, get, he left Ingram it. on the board. Yeah, you take Ingram. Take him. You take him. Ingram. It's too much yeah. ADP value. Yeah. You, yeah, you can't pass that value. Cool. So it works out for us. I mean, you know, the way that we drafted, we got a stronger guard. Um, yeah, we did, and Ingram made it all the way back, so we got huge value off of Ingram. Now that makes, playing, very, that makes it very easy to make this a f- max five wing build. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, we are tying up like the flex spot in a wing, or at least at least we're making that investment. Um, so we we probably do need a big. Next round, we passed on Aiden for Ingram, but that's just because of the ADP value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be likely a four center build team. For me, yeah, yeah. Um, because who are we looking at? Probably Jonas or KP, and both of those guys, I don't feel yeah. like super confident in. KP would be. I'd be down for KP. How's the uh, ankle on KP? Uh, he's fine. It, it was just real minor. He'll be. It won't. It shouldn't affect him during the season. Okay. Cause, Famous cause last a, words when you draft KP, though. Well, Lamelo walked off and he looked okay, and then they came back. Well, he really two. rolled it, though. He really rolled it. KP yeah. is just kind of a little tweaky. Okay, there goes KP. So Jonas is gone, and KP is gone. So um, I don't know who else is there. I guess like. Uh, Allen, no, Allen went too. Allen's gone. You get into you get into Shangoon and that type, that type of Nurkic. stuff. Nurkic, Nurkic, Pirtle, Shangoon, Miles Turner. Okay. Well, you know, uh, it's worth it. I think to to whenever this happens to you, take that ADP value because, especially if you're building a portfolio of teams, 
because you can have some teams where it works out like that. That's what was the best optimal yeah. Christian Wood available to. Mm-hmm. We have Wood ahead of Nurkic now. Um, I finished so, so. him today, so yeah, we're up. So um, and, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. With either with either Wood or Nurk here. I prefer I prefer Wood personally, but if you guys want to okay. go Nurk Daddy, I'm fine with Wood as well. Wood. What else is there for the other positions? I mean, we had to take a big right just to make sure that was. Yeah, I just I'm just curious yeah. what, what yeah. kind of. Yeah, it's fine. Jamal, D'Lo, yeah, nobody like screaming. Yeah, I guess like Jamal. Has you could have gone. You could have gone, gone Jamal there. Yeah. Could have kept rolling the dice on, on the big men. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, there's a question that popped up um, saying, "Is there an optimal way to use the top 150 in the points ranks together in preparation for a draft?" Mike, why don't you talk about how you think of the top 150 and what type of scoring it's most connected to because obviously the you know there's a big difference between points and roto just generally yeah. like anybody that's like docked in roto for for free throw or percentages is just it's not an issue in points leagues yeah i mean it's pretty much it um i would just i mean i trust everything dink does so if you have a points league you know just lean more on that and you know just sort of take out my my 150 and see who i have pushed up especially later um and i would mention as well that definitely check out like um, the wish list sheet that'll kind of give you an idea of. I mean, most of those guys in the late round picks aren't like certain category guys, they're all just pure upside players. That's what I was so, gonna say. I, I was gonna say, build your early foundation through the, the points based rankings, and then I would say adjust towards the back end to guys that you know Gallagher likes that have upside to them. That's the thing that I would do. Yep, 100%. Yeah. Clint Capella with uh, eight points and 13 boards at half against Jared Allen tonight, by the way. I, I mean, I listened to the back. man, I listened to the man machine and like, I mean, just, just in like, as an appetizer for the, my guy Gallagher, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm with the machine. It's I'm Clint Capella. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it. Can't do it. I've got Capella as low as we could possibly have him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I, just I, can't, I can't. it's I, pure, pure bias. I, I deserve that one, but. I hope I just it don't want anybody try, doing my rankings have Clint Capella on their team. I hope it. I mean, I, I, I get it. I, I hope, I hope you're right because I have them as low as, as low as I could possibly. Uh, have. We're on deck, so we got, uh, we got options here. Uh, got Nurk Daddy if you want to double bang it. Uh, well, we got, what, we got Dink's up. guy. I don't think this guy's. I don't think this guy's. Uh, I would definitely. I would 100 percent take Nurk. Yeah, I'm with that. There's nothing else. We were, de- we were debating between them at the last pick. This team is yeah. now set up very nicely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's a They're slam good. dunk because it's a position that we needed given the construction we have. Plus, we get massive value. What is that? Like 11 picks? Yep. So, yeah, it's, it's not even debatable. And, like, uh, we have already three. This is the part of the draft where, like, there's a lot of wings that usually go. You know, you've got like the Vassal, MPJ, Jabari, Michael, Bridges, OG, Sadiq Bay, and then you've got more guys with like Buddy and 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 Jeremy Grant and Laurie. So, like, a lot of wings go off the board here. We already have three wings on our team that we've invested very high picks in. Three, we took three wings in the first high five rounds. So it makes sense to take a guard or a big here and big we needed because we are we we have a weak you know woods our first pick so there's nothing to to think about with that pick nice um now we have we have um two guard three wing two big so we could take guard we're up in two picks i think the preference would be to get a guard here absolutely yeah let's see what chris does i've seen Chris in quite yeah, a few Chris, of these. A gazillion drafts. Yeah. He's probably watching right now too. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's such a oh, it goes miles. Okay, so that's that's good. So we got we got options here. All right, we're uh, up. I have a very 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 strong preference. Yeah, me too. It's my guy. 
Trey, Trey. Take my guy. <laughs> there you go. It's your guy. All right. <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. Great playoff schedule. Yep. And so that's what I mean Sh- by like, it. that's what I mean by like the Cade thing is like I feel like I can take a couple guards that are like your third, three, sixth guard that have phenomenal playoff schedules and eat away at the potential lost value that I have from Cade. Um, if Cade can carry me through the regular season. Mm-hmm. That's sort of my thought process on it. Um, Just hope Trey isn't too too good to. Because the other thing you have to remember good. is guys who have worse playoff schedules. Guess what? They have better regular season schedules. Yeah, that's how the math works. Because everybody plays the same amount of games. So if you're playing fewer in the playoffs, it's because you're playing more in the regular season. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I guess like the way that I build is like. I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of that equity to advance in order to build for the finals so that the teams that I do get in the playoffs, like have the best chance to win the finals because it's a top heavy contest. So like the way that I'm building, I'm sacrificing um, some advanced equity, like some min cash yeah. equity from a DFS perspective. But I think that's the optimal way. I think that is the optimal way. But if you're building a portfolio, I would say that you want to take guys when they're below ADP yeah. and that's Cade three spots below compared to Fox or Kyrie three spots ahead. That's the differentiator for me. If I'm building a portfolio, if I was drafting one team, I probably would take Fox there, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you just have to be comfortable with not having a lot of Cade in a big investment. You're, you're spending so much time and energy and money trying to create a portfolio of teams for these best ball contests. And if you take Fox there, you have to be telling yourself, I don't have a lot of Cade. If Cade is the ticket to winning, then I'm okay with losing. You know, now mm-hmm. for me, like I'm okay with losing because I don't think that Cade has the ceiling to bury me at 2780p. But that's just the bed that I made, you know. Mm-hmm. And everybody is like, and I say this in the schedule piece too, everybody is draftable at the right price. So I still have mm-hmm. some Kate as well. It's just, you know, you know, I'm picky. <laughs> Gotta be. Zach asks, uh, is there a difference in builds between DK and underdog? So I think we got a question similar to this last time. And I'll 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 speak to it as... Uh, we're up. Let's, so let's take this pick first. first. Yeah. 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 Do you want to take another one of your guys, or do you want to take another guard? This would you got this, a lot of yeah. This for me would be um, would be Marcus Smart, but I would take Smart as well. Um, we need the guard more, and it's the ADP value. Cool. I mean, when you take three wings in the first five rounds, like, and you have a wing, I mean, a guard that has a seven ADP lower, and that our projections are higher on. I think it's Marcus Smart. Quantity over quality. Clef, you want to go back to uh, DraftKings or Sandal? Yeah, or for sure. Underdog? Yeah, I mean, so, okay, the, the most thoughtful way that I can say this is that the difference between the two sites is the, is the center position or the, or the big position. And there being a positional premium on center on DraftKings and and a penalty on big on underdog. So when you're thinking about filling your flex spot, you want to be filling it with, ideally, with bigs on underdog and with guards on DraftKings. All right? Because, you know, that position is scoring more. The big position is scoring more than the guard position on underdog. And... And it's outscoring wing. Just take your, you know, the average of all of the players of the position and see what they score on average. And that's, you know, gonna gonna drive you towards big. And then like with DraftKings, it's like I really don't want to be filling my flex position with with centers. And if if I can afford avoid if I can afford to, I'll I'll fill it with like guards or forwards. Now that's a really big piece of edge that I just gave. So keep that in mind when you're when you're building. Not everybody's building like that. And there are some times where you can fill, of course, like there's 
you know, many, many of the drafts that I've done, I'm filling my flex spot on underdog with um, a guard or a wing. But like, I'm also comfortable taking two bigs in the first four rounds if that's the way the board falls to me because I know that I can, you know, count that big towards my flex and I can mm -hmm. focus on the other positions in the next three or four rounds. My only Zion share is Jokic and Zion. This is I thought it would be a unique way to build. I never see him fall that far to 24, 25. So it's like, all right, let's take one Zion here. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I've taken Zion yet, but yeah, I'm probably going to get there because I took my first Curry share like <laughs> four days ago. I took my first Shea share like a week before that. So I'll probably get there. <laughs> all right. We're on deck. Oh, we got a lot of options here. Uh, I think I know where Dink wants to go, um, which I'm good with. Um, I think class probably go with it too. We won't table. Is that a little early for him, or maybe a little earlier? It's he's our fourth. I would, take, I, would I would take. I would take Dylan Brooks here. Oh, so Dylan I would Brooks, also okay. take Dylan Brooks because yeah. you're nine spots lower on ADP, and you get the playoff schedule. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. If he's if he's still on the team, but he should be. All right, let's do it. Are they talking about trading him? Oh yeah, some of the Grizzlies beats are talking about that. He's a little bit of a trade risk, but I mean, the the God's honest truth is they're if, if they trade him, they they are going to be doing so from a position of having a bad season. Like if they're having a decent season, they don't have the depth to trade him. <laughs> they're like yeah. they're 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 one of these teams that really has lost a lot of depth in the offseason without Melton without Kyle Anderson. Um, well, it's just a fit. It's just a fit thing. Like there's a lot of talk from Jenkins and some of the front office guys talking about really want to embrace more three pointers, have a better half court offense. And Brooks obviously doesn't really suit that style. So it's yeah. more just a stylistic thing. Totally. Well, they, need it. They, don't, they don't have, they don't have losing Melton. They don't have the on ball defense depth anymore. So exactly. they need him for that. end. Of that's the their fault. So. <laughs> that, like, yeah. that they like, they traded Melton to get a first round pick. Yeah. And so, I don't think Dylan Brooks is going to have a big trade market if people are out there looking for Dylan. Yeah. I don't think people are out there looking to acquire Dylan Brooks. So yeah. if they trade him, they have they do not have very much depth, and that's why I'm saying like I think that's only happening if they're having a really disappointing season, which they could. Yeah, Ziari is not ready to fill that role, and he's yeah. not going to be he's not going to give you the on ball defense that Brooks is going to give you. Yeah, I should add there was a report from Jake Fisher today. Uh, let me pull it up here. I forgot. Uh, Saying the um, the basically the Grizzlies are trying to get Jay Crowder and offer Danny Green and like filler, um, but the Suns don't want to do that. The Suns don't want to pick up a uh, dead money Dan dead money Danny, but uh, it's interesting. They just acquired him. Like, what are they doing? Well, they they acquired, oh, they, just, they, they acquired yeah. him to get the first round pick. It wasn't yeah. yeah. It was yeah. it's it was just the salary that happened to to fit. Yeah, they didn't yeah. trade for Danny. They traded for his salary. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, but like they brought this upon their own house. They know? brought all, all of this yeah. upon themselves. Yeah. 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 Okay, we have a pick next. We have a 5-3-2. 5-3-2, yeah. We pick 126. There's two guys that I would consider here. I would take Levert. I would take Levert here. Ugh. Uh, the two guys are Levert and and your guy, Gallagher. Yeah, that's who I would want to take. But you could take Levert if you want. Why, right. why do you want to take Levert? Uh, ADP value. ADP value, yeah. Top-ranked wing on the board. I think we prioritize wing over the other positions based on where there's value late in the draft. Like, Okay. Yeah, plus roster construction. We have five guards. And, like, Monte is a guy that's going to be very stable. He's going to give you usable weeks. Yeah. And he's going to protect you from injuries. And we have already taken five guards, so we don't need some of that stability quite as much. Well, I was thinking about another another one of my guys who's like an officially my guy. If you know who I'm talking about, he's unofficially your guy. You're saying somebody is your guy that's not actually your no, guy. He, well, he's an official my guy. He's okay. an official my guy. Like Monty's not officially my guy, but he kind of is. But no, no, he's not. No, this is the, <laughs> this is the no. This is the whole point. Yeah. You have yeah, yeah. I didn't say he's officially. He's just like sort of mine. You have twelve. I, guys. He, he, well, have 12. I, I have a my guy draft with you guys, and I have a no, my guy draft with the 12. machine. No, you have twelve. You only have twelve. <laughs> but the machine, if machine, did you can hear me? 
This is the whole, this is the whole, this was the whole purpose of the bit was to teach uh, you Gallagher that you can only yeah. have so many guys. You can't have a hundred guys. I think that's the problem. I think that's Gallagher's problem is that he drew six and he did, and he has too many guys. So he was like, well, I, literally, I literally read about players every day. So it's just, it's hard for me to <laughs> do so, so much content and like not write about guys and not like them. So it's like kind of a nature of the beast. I'd I'm like a lot of stuff. players in the league. They're just not all my guys. Oh, I got true. 12. <laughs> but I also have I to do it. best. I have to do best ball flag plants. I have to do season long flag plants. I have to I do have rookie. To do all the same I, stuff you do. I don't know what you're talking I, about. You don't do as much season long stuff as I do. I'm like, you didn't even, we'll talk more about it later, but um, this will be good. It's going to be fun. Gallagher saying okay. that he needs 24 guys. He needs double yeah, the do. guys that you think. <laughs> I ran the nut. I ran the nut low. He needs a, 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 a 12 team draft where he's all 12 teams. <laughs> yes. Well, getting, getting six was six was real bad. Uh, all right, we're up five, four, two. Pick where 139. I'm pretty indifferent here. I would probably be leaning towards one of those two bigs at the mm -hmm. top can, there. All right. Can we take Isaiah Jackson? That's because, who I want to take. Yeah. All right. He was almost my guy. It was between him and yeah. the last guys. guy that I took. Here's yeah. the thing with Isaiah Jackson. That Here's why I love him so much. Well, number one, we're already high on him in the rankings. Number two, he's a massive stocks guy. All right. Anybody who played DFS last year, especially on FanDuel, you know who Isaiah Jackson is. And you get the upside of if the Lakers wake up and make that deal, okay, then he's going to walk into a boatload of minutes at the right time. And he has a good playoff schedule. So, like, for me – Dude, Isaiah Jackson is one of the guys I want to be most overweight at the end of the best How much? Whoop, yeah, I think I'm like 20%. I'm hammering that dude. What are you at, yeah. Uh Let me check it right now. Just ball, just ball, or ballpark it. Yeah. No, that's good. It's fast. Yeah. Uh, 22.8%. He's my top big exposure, and he's my oh, second yeah. overall. This is my second highest exposure overall. 22.8, like, for for a portfolio is 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 a lot, it, you know. Yeah. Uh, the uh, normal guy, if you just take him once every whatever draft, you, you get him at eight eight percent or so of the time. So I'm rostering him like three times the field. Uh, Chip Skylark notes you only start what six of sixteen a week. You should be targeting players that have seven to eight game weeks in any playoff week because having sixteen eight week final guys isn't helpful when you can only use six. So that's basically talking about like the layering strategy that Gallagher was asking about. I think it's fine. I th I the big thing that I would say is like when we're talking about good playoff schedules, we're not talking about just the final week. We're talking about mm -hmm. all three of the playoff weeks. Um, so that's when we talk about like OKC. When we talk about Memphis, we're talking about situations that have all of those, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to like H Houston is another one, um, Philly, Sacramento. Like those are the teams that have all of them. So that's kind of what we're referring to. But yeah, it's good to layer layer in them. I just wouldn't go nuts with like making all of your decisions based around the playoffs. Uh, at some point, you want to be taking the players who are most likely to be good during the season. And like to further that, there were times last playoffs where I had a guy that played fewer games in a double in a double week because like the the five the playoffs are double weeks on both UD and DK and. <clears throat> and he counted, even though he had fewer games, just because he went ham. Yeah. I think it was like Kevin Porter or something like that. This, uh, this next pick, I think, is very interesting. So if you look yeah. at the board, if you look at the board, um, you know, Zubots or Hartenstein look like great for a four center build. Here's the mm -hmm. challenge, though. Look at how barren guard is. And we only have five. And... Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's a guard you want to reach for here, Claff, or if you're taking the the Zubats heart and sign value. You gotta gotta go quick. Uh, probably yeah, like Conley gives us uh, some value here. Um, you want Conley, I got five seconds. Yeah, Conley, because there's going to be lots of bigs that we could put as our yeah. Big. I agree. I agree with that. That's why I was kind of saying like I think taking the sixth guard makes the most sense, but I didn't like anyone that was there. Well, Conley, you know, Conley, you're hoping it. to help help get you through the early part of the season, essentially. Yeah, and I was afraid that they would relegate him to the bench, 
but I don't think they're going to do that. I think that they're going to play Conley. All right, Gallagher, why don't you go on the starting five on, on Utah? Yeah, it's, it's going to be Conley, Conley, Sexton, Laurie Marketin, Jared Vanderbilt, Kelly Olenek. Kelly it Olenek. Has not, so like, it has not been Sexton in the in the preseason for what it's worth. I mean, they've just been kind of shuffling around, I think, to, to rest Clark guys. He, and he's a new player. You want to get him incorporated with different players. I think that's kind of yeah. the logic there. I mean, yeah, I, ho- I hope so. But it's been Clarkson in the – in the preseason. Yeah. I mean, they're, and, I mean, it just makes, it's very odd that they would, you know, bring Clarkson into the first unit like that. And like in that kind of situation, like, I don't really like the rates for Sexton as much. I think that Conley is going to do a lot of the assisting on that team. You know, you like Sexton if he's going to be the point guard and Conley's yeah. out of there, but he, this, he's not being drafted like that. And that's why I'm kind of, I don't underweight Sexton. So you get uh, Conley for the early part of the season, plus you get trade equity if he gets traded to a contender. But I don't know if he, he loses minutes or something like that. I mean, the best situation might be, honestly, for him to stay on Utah the entire year, and then he gets the eight games in the playoffs. If he's, not shut playing down. The playoffs though. he's not playing in the playoffs. They, they'd be shut, <sighs> yeah. He'd be shut down long before that. Yeah, That's why he's a tough pick. But like we were, we were in kind of a sticky spot there at guard. Mm-hmm. You get the value, though. I mean, it, yeah. you know. I like value. We're up again. Uh, we're up again. I'm a value investor. Uh, I would I would take Hartenstein here. Yep, yeah, I'm definitely okay with that. Yeah, and so like, if you take like Conley and Hartenstein, like that, it, I like that better than taking like mm-hmm. Zoo and Norm. Zoo and Norm, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Um, Alan asks. Thoughts on guys playing eight games in the final round being less likely to play all eight due to rest on back to back. The reverse with guys playing six who may not need more rest between games. I'll uh, I'll comment on this one first. They maybe they're less likely to play in eight, uh, but they're more likely to play in eight than someone who only has six scheduled. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, the guy with only six scheduled cannot play in eight under any circumstance. And what if the six are back to back? Like, so yeah, maybe it smooths out to where some of the eights are more sevens and some of the sixes are more sixes, uh, which is why I'm saying, like, I really think the you don't draft the whole draft based on playoff schedule, but I do think you break ties based on playoff schedule generally where you think there are ties. And that's, that's what I, I been getting this sort of iteration of a question is basically like, how much do you weight playoff schedules? And my answer is always like, generally ties i'm not jumping tiers because of the playoff schedule because too much stuff can happen during the course of the season including trades injuries rest whatever and that's a point that we make in the article and another point that we make in the article is that the playoff schedule is more important on DraftKings than on on underdog because in underdog you've got the playoff weeks which are always two weeks um they're double weeks And in the middle of that double week, you can actually bank your scores in underdog. So if you have like the Knicks and they have two games in one week and four games in another week, well, you can drop the Knicks schedule for the first week and then count the four games and the four, four games in one week is, is a lot. That's, that's the most you can play basically. Whereas on DraftKings, they don't give you the ability to bank like halfway during the double week. So it's more important on DraftKings. And there's fewer teams that have those eight games in the finals. Oh, there was a question about Middleton. I thought that was interesting. Um, okay, we have we picking two, two, two picks. Yeah, our we'll pick, and then we, we can, can talk about it. Go, go to another one. Yeah. So that's something I think through when I'm thinking about picking Middleton. I think it's a good topic. Let's check out the board um, guy here. Yeah. Oh, man. Claff. <laughs> Uh, I think Claff and I are going to be on the same guy here. Yep, I think so. <laughs> I would take Lonzo. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, God, seventh guard. I took Lonzo at this point earlier today for in my my first Lonzo share, but it's like, okay, yeah, there's a yeah, chance. I'm there's with... a chance he's playing in the second half. Like, yep. This is what I'm talking about with guys that our projections are not high on that you draft on your teams. Rest assured that every single time you have them you're getting them way past ADP. Okay. That like, that is like, you could, you do that in NFL too. You can do that in NBA. Like 
we're not against any player. Any player can be drafted at the right price. I know that our rankings are high on some guys and low on other guys, but just be disciplined when you draft. And like if take taking Lonzo 40 spots after ADP, you know, is you're just nothing but upside at that point. And we needed like we I think this was a seven guard build. Yeah, for sure. So for sure. Um, so we have got a seven. We're looking probably to seven five four, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we've got seven four four. So get a, so wing. a wing. We get a wing. Yeah, we get a wing to end it. And like, let's talk about the profile of the guy that we would like, given the structure of our team. Yeah. Um, we Tatum, Pascal Siakam, and Ingram. So we have like, um, I think some good stability there with three guys that are that strong. Um, mm -hmm. And Lavert is going to start as well. So I would probably take like a chance on like a guy with a little bit of a ceiling, like, like not like a Kyle Anderson type guy, like a little bit of a guy that, um, you know, maybe breaks out. And that's very, very hard to do at the wing position in week 16. Mm -hmm. But looking at the board, like some guys that would maybe do that for me, maybe Denny because, you know, Kispert's going to be hurt and he's young, you know, Kyle Anderson, we kind of like know who he is. Same with Covington. Um, Struess, like maybe. Um, I was thinking Covington, just looking for some contingency on you know a lot of late season rest for Clippers, something along those lines made sense to me, but open to whatever. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Dean? So well, Covington, 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 Covington went. So Covington went. So I think it's yeah. kind of. Can you scroll up, Gallagher? Yeah. That's uh, top. Yeah. Struess is fine by me, but like brutal playoff schedule. So I I don't have mm -hmm. a strong. I've taken Struess. I've taken. Kyle Anderson. I've not taken KCP, um, but those are the guys I've taken. Okay. Struce. Okay. Yeah, cool. I mean, you've got like PJ Tucker's minutes vacated, so it's possible that they play Struce a lot to fill those minutes. We did yeah. see him play some power forward last year. Yeah. Um, and he said he wants okay. to play it again. So, so we'll get into some of these questions. Christmas said, uh, when this is over, would love to hear your thoughts on Middleton plumbing in these drafts. At what point do you pull the trigger? I mean, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't been drafting Middleton any differently than what I was drafting him before, which is like in the fifties. If I need a wing, he's in play. Like, I've, I don't, I haven't noticed taking him more of late. I don't know. Have you guys? Uh, a little bit. Um, but I, I, I what I'm good. Yeah, I think he falls a little bit more on DK than on on underdog. Um, I moved him behind Aiden. That's what I did when the news came out. <laughs> I moved him one spot lower in my rankings. I'm basically yeah. treating him the same. Okay, he's going to miss, you know. I always knew that he could miss, like, potentially the first week of the mm -hmm. season. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more. The only I really missed. thing I would add is, you know, don't like, – this, this. if I draft Middleton, I'm less likely to draft Bogdan Bogdanovich. I'm less likely to draft guys who, who are a little bit dinged up right now. And if it's if he's my third wing, for instance, then that those concerns kind of go away. Same when my top two wings are healthy, which they almost certainly are. Um, most you have Kawhi, I guess. Yeah. So those are really the only things you want to think through. Is you don't want to take, you know, if if you know Middleton is your, you know, second guy, uh, like you want to make sure that you're drafting guys who are, you know, really um, comfortable there. Yeah, and like the thing is, you put your finger on it, but I'll just say it explicitly: your draft strategy on Middleton doesn't change substantially, but what you do around yeah. Middleton changes. Mm -hmm. You know. You're yeah. you're you need to make sure that you have a little bit more safety um, at wing, maybe in round like seven or eight, um, that you can you can mitigate the blow from Middleton not being there for the first two weeks of the season if needed. Yeah, I was in a spot where I didn't have a wing in round five, and I had you know uh, it just it just worked. All the wings were just flying off. Mm -hmm. I had to take I had to take one, so it was between Middleton or Paolo, and I was like, man. If I take Middleton, I could be in real trouble early, especially if he misses time, especially since this team wants to make a deep playoff run. So I was like, okay, let's take Paolo. Um, yeah. So that was kind of the only thing. I, I like if you're if you're in that spot where like you're desperate, and then because if you take Middleton again, you're gonna really have to be like praying that wings are falling to you like throughout the draft, and it's not a spot you want to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think? Just by like asking, how off the board have you been going in the last few rounds? I'll note for me. I I mean. It's not 
I, I guess the guys that I'm targeting in the last few rounds are a little bit off the board, but really for me, it's just like, is there a scenario this guy has enough upside to get into lineups for me? And yeah. so I have a lot of backup point guards that if their starting point guard gets hurt, they usually take over that role. So like Tyus Jones, Cam Payne, um, guys like that. On the forward side or on the wing side, I have a lot of Avdija. I think there's ceiling with him. I have some Jonathan Isaac. I think there's ceiling with him. I have some Jeremy Sohan. Mm -hmm. I think there's ceiling with him. Um, on the big side, I have Okongwu. I have Jalen Duran. I have guys, mm -hmm. just guys that I think they're ceiling to. And they naturally end up being a little bit more off the board. So um, I have not gone, I guess, beyond that, which would go deeper and deeper into the rankings. Uh, Cause I just haven't, I, I scroll through and I just look for guys that I think have enough upside to really count. And I don't see a ton. My only sure. guy, well, it used, it used to be Sohan. I was jamming Sohan like before it was cool, but um, now, uh, now, now, obviously, I'm taking Trey Murphy. Who now he's not. Um, he's he's he's. Uh, I was doing that before it was cool too. So <laughs> that's awesome, Gallagher man. That's neither neither, neither of neither of which are my guys, by the way. Uh, they're <laughs> someone else's guys. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, and like I will just make a point like this, like. You know how in NFL we talk about the value of getting guys that are unowned, that are not rostered on very many teams? Mm -hmm. um, that concept is true in the NBA as well. It's harder to find guys that are not, that have that path to upside that are not being drafted just because of the nature of the sport. So just keep that in mind. But like every now and then I will get, I'll, I will make an effort to draft to draft a guy that I don't think is going to be too owned. Um, so a little bit like uh, Kendrick Nunn, um, Malik Monk, and then uh, this the the most the craziest that I've ever gotten and and like Dink actually called me out on it was I have one share of Derrick Rose in like. 400 and something drafts <laughs> that was actually the, the when you did it it was more because of what was on the board but i i think it's reasonable um but yeah yeah it's it's like you know it, you know it's it's 0 0.005 percent of my portfolio so yeah. whatever chips by lark noted talking about like trey man usman jiang i just I don't, I don't know. I don't think Usman Jiang's ready to play. So like, I just don't think he'd have enough upside because I don't think he's good. That, yeah. that Trey man, like I could see a scenario. Um, so I don't, I don't hate that type of idea. I will note that just like, it's really hard for me to project the thunder because as you saw last year, the guys that would theoretically be winning championships in the finals uh, were not on their roster at this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. They were guys yeah. that were just picked up off the street and played for forty minutes a night. Yeah, like the Greek dude, Xavier, Houston, um, Jalen Horde, like Jalen Horde. Yeah. So, so I don't know. It's it's Z Xavier I, Simpson playing like forty-seven yeah. minutes with the hook shot. It's, it's it's not to say that like you shouldn't do it. Like those guys are terrible. It's just to say like I just don't know. Like I don't feel confident that those are the guys. Whereas like Tyus Jones campaign, like I feel very confident if the point guard in front of them goes down, those guys are the guys and I'm not drafting them enough any, like, because I, because of positional mixes that I need that, like I have like 40, 50% that I need to diversify out to others. I'll push back. I thought Usman Jang's looked a little bit better as the preseason's gone along. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to argue with and say like, he's a, you know, I would pick him. I have zero Usman Jang, but I, I mean, if you want to do it, I guess I, it, with a great playoff schedule, you can make a case for it. But yeah, I'm yeah. just I'm just I'm just already getting this is like my warm up to argue with Dink. So just uh, bear <laughs> with me for a sec. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, the, the, the reality of the situation is like most of these guys on the end of your roster are never going to count, never going to matter anyway. So if you have a reason to get behind them, go for it. You know, like mm -hmm. it's I, I think last yeah, year was an your outlier. Six, it's your 16th round pick. We, we had a situation last year with Jalen Brunson where he was being he was not being valued properly by the market we put our projections he still wasn't being valued properly by the market and we could get really really overweight on somebody that we thought had a lot of upside i don't really see that same scenario this year um you know i guess i i'm per you know i think campaign has a path but 
I think Tyus Jones is that guy this year. Tyus Jones yeah. is that guy. I've been drafting Tyus I mean, Jones. It's very, di- it's very, di- it's very different, right? Because he's not Jalen Brunson. He's not playing alongside. He's not going to be the number two usage guy. Like it's very different than Jalen Brunson. Yeah. But I think the clearest path, and we're talking about what happens if Dylan Brooks gets traded or whatever. Those are all scenarios, in my opinion, that the Grizzlies are having a really bad year. The Grizzlies are having a really bad year. What's what's happened? Maybe Jaws gotten hurt. Like they're mm-hmm. in. So Tyus is the guy that I've been the highest on in rounds 14 and beyond. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I'm drafting Tyus as well, I guess campaign for me. And like, I was taking a good bit of Rubio before we, we heard that he's not going to be ready until next year, basically. Mm-hmm. I, I can't just, I can't do it on pain. I just think with the Suns trade crowd, they're going to get someone to compete and derail them. But there's a chance I'm, there's a very good chance I'm wrong, but I'm just leaning into other guys in that spot personally. Well, we know that he's a high rates player. So yeah, I get, I get it. I definitely get. It. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead though. Yeah. Well, if, so all you need is for him to get minutes, and so if you multiply yeah. rates, high rates times minutes, you get you get sex, right? So we're just <laughs> looking for the minutes, which means yeah. the old dude has to get hurt. So there's a path. Like you know, it's yeah. harder for like a guy with like a 15 percent usage rate and a six percent assist rate to do anything. To count on your right, even if he gets minutes. So, yeah, and like we were saying with the Jangs, like it's your like your last pick. You know, it's who cares? Like most of the time, but if you get that outcome, then it could really separate for you. Yeah. Um. It's really how much time do I have to swap here? Okay, I have an hour. Okay. Um. Sorry, lots of preseason news breaking that I have to do. Nice. It's a big slate too. I think there was like six or seven games. Eight, Eight games tonight. Three late ones. Um, I thought about playing it. I just, I just ran out of time. But um, I'm not. I don't know. I like. I, I wanted to play tonight, but I just didn't get around to it. Maybe, maybe I'll hit like tomorrow or something like that. Tomorrow's a two games late. So Friday, Friday, Fridays, Friday, and maybe Saturday. Friday, Friday is a good slate though. Yeah, have was, uh, there a, was there a rate my team on there? Yeah, do you want to rate seven spot? All right, so right uh, seven spot. All right, so seven spot. He dude gets my guys, so we already give him an A. <laughs> and he got one of my guys, one of Dink's guys, two of my guys, two of Dink's guys, another one of Class guys. This is a yeah, this is a very my guy draft right here. Yeah, so his second wing is Devin Vassell, and he took in rounds. The cell. The cell, oh, okay, yeah. so. Okay. Um, so he gets to put that big in the flex, like we talked about. He gets CJ McCollum and Terry Rozier for his guards. Um, I probably would have taken. Wait, was Keldon already gone by the time he got to pick in six? Uh, yeah, Keldon was, was. Yeah, he's gone. Okay, but he took Rozier over Paolo, um, which I guess I mean we love Rozier, so works he is probably just but it's like you were saying like man you are you're just like praying that Keldon falls to you just because yeah. like you don't really want tobias there it's too, i i i can't do it i mean i guess i could do it on clay would you have taken clay there class then uh clay's adp is or what tobias. like 67.1 that's yeah somebody him or, you'd look at him or tobias there just to um i would have taken clay thompson yeah um, better playoff schedule yeah yeah, um, I, but you know, so he takes Kevin Porter, um, who I love. Which, He's my guy. Yeah, I love too. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and yeah. he gets a great playoff schedule. I would have probably taken Clay, but like, I mean, like the other than that, I mean, AD with Durant is as good as you can do from the seven spot, um, and he takes the Bam. So that's going to be the only knock on Bam we mentioned was the playoff schedule. Mm-hmm. It, Miami has the stone worst playoff schedule. So, I mean, you could have taken Paul George there, which is probably what I would have done. But um, I like your team. What is it? Five, five and nine. What, what about the Time Lord pick? I think at pick 114, it's fine. Like, you know, when the underdog yeah. contests like were released, initially he was going around pick 70. And obviously mm-hmm. that was before the news, but he's now 40 spots lower. So um, that's a guy that I took my first share of. I took my first share of Time Lord two days ago. 
Um, so I've been off him for basically the entire draft process, but he's finally reaching valuations that I'm comfortable investing at. All right, fans in the house. Oh, baby, here it goes. Y'all ready? Sure fans been... Y'all ready? Ready for to go? Game? Yep. Y'all ready for the roast of Michael Gallagher? <laughs> yep. It's gonna be bad. I'm drinking high noons. I'm still. I, I only drink beers with you, fan. I don't drink beers anymore unless I'm like. I should. I should have got beers. I'm like kind of with you. Yeah. But, uh... I'm drinking FML for in honor of Mike Gallagher. <laughs> A stone hazy double. Oh man. I'm uh I'm late I'm late swapping all my guys in preseason uh slate in honor of Gallagher because you know he, you started with guys that he thought were his guys and then he had to late swap to all the guys that are actually his guys now. So I'm doing I'm doing that in honor of Gallagher. I thought I thought in preseason they let you just roster every single player and let them be your guy. Yeah. Is that how it, that's works? how it works, right? That's how Gallagher no, thinks. They think no salary <laughs> cap, no positions. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> this was it was a lot more fun than I thought than I bargained for. Oh, I knew it was gonna be fun, and I knew it was gonna be snipe fest because I talk about so many damn guys I like. So, and Dink Dink is a Dink is really good at it. Dink, Dink's really good at this. And you drew six. I'm a little Andrew sniper. six. Yeah. I'm a little sniper. I kept the cards to the vest. Did you, did you? Did you? Did you keep? Did you keep your your card your cards covered and your all like knowing we were going to do that because you were pretty quiet. I, you surprised me a couple times. <laughs> what like, oh my god! You're, but like, because I, I was like dumping all this stuff to you guys, and like you were like, oh, we'll talk about it when we do the draft. But uh, we're still waiting for Dank and Gary is TBD. Uh, let me tweet it out again so I'll let everyone out there want to see me get roasted. Uh, Andrew asks, is NBA preseason God's game or is that NFL? It is also God's game. All preseason is God's game. You know why it's God's game for me? I don't have public projections out there. And anytime I can play against <laughs> against people that are not using my stuff, it's it's God's game for me. So WNBA, NBA preseason, God's game. Love it, man. There's like, I in here. In the my guy, like, dude, I thought I had the tech, you know. So, like, I have I have a reputation for being like, you know, the last man to the party kind of thing. <laughs> and so I had my guy, and I was like, dude, this this is the stone cold nuts. And I go and look, and like, Dink took him like three don't, rounds. Don't reveal who. Don't reveal. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No table, no table talking. We don't made the picture already. What's up, fellas? Dink. Here, you guys are. Uh talking about your drink so i got the colorado chiller here a nice coors light in there oh repping the, very nice. repping the denver brand very nice oh let the roast begin yeah <laughs> yep where's hartman uh he's tbd it's, he his, it's, his, what, it's his wife's birthday today so <laughs> and he was at a but bachelor I mean, party when we were doing the my guy yeah yeah gary's had a wild here so dude. does anyone else have a best ball question before uh anyone do you want to talk more best ball and just forget this or no <laughs> <laughs> uh, if anyone has a chat question um let us know as we're about to about to rip this thing uh let me get a tweet out i guess i don't know if gary's coming but he won't get the at i mean i mean we can talk best ball i'm gonna roast you regardless you know it doesn't any <laughs> yeah that's for sure yeah, for sure. God, I just, fire, I, fire, fire yeah. up a season long half. I'll, I'll, you know, find a way to roast you. It's, it's, it's all, yeah. it's all good. How did the best ball draft go for you guys? It's good. We we had the number six spot, but what, we had a, a gift with Cat going four, <laughs> so we got Tatum. Oh yeah. I had only one half tonight. Very tilting. Very tilting. For Zion, yeah, yeah, he's Ho hopefully, hopefully not injury related, but no, very tilting. That was a double whammy for me because I uh, did not have as much Willie Hernan Gomez as the field, thinking he was not that great of a play next to Zion, and now he gets the second half without Zion next to him. Yeah, that's not ideal. Not great. Not great, Bob. I think we touted playing him one time and we didn't even know if he was going to play at some point last year. Willie? Oh yeah. Yeah. I touted him hard one time because Joe Val was going to get hurt 
or Joe Val was questionable and I thought he wasn't going to play. And then Joe, and I thought he was fine in case Joe Val did play because he was a backup center against Portland. And then they played small and he, he got a DMV CD <laughs> 50% of Willie Ernan Gomez with a straight stone zero. That was fun. Oh my God. We're going to have some uh, fun this year too. So there's going to be some Willie.